so many times before but something has happened i can see it in your writing i can tell my world is crumbling and the blues are at my door the last letter that you wrote was on the blue piece of paper hey sarah hey man how you doing how good to you? see you <laughs> Good to connect. Good to connect, yes, I know, yeah. So, first of all, we're in Monterey, California. We made it. Know. We made it here. Rebels and Renegades. Sometimes. Does that ever happen to you? Like, most of the time yeah. on tour. It's funny, it's like, I've been so busy this year that it's just, you know, a constant moving travel schedule. So, I feel like I've been kind of, you know, we have our master tour app on, oh my God, on our phones. I know, and it's like, I'm usually good about looking two or three days in advance yeah. and being like, okay, where are we again? And yeah. then, you know, I, I look at the, the bigger schedule and try to memorize it but it just doesn't, it doesn't stick, stick when you're when you're so the master tour so app, for people that don't know is the app that like touring artists have where it's, yeah your life that is laid out in front of you our wonderful tour managers put in our schedules exactly. and we know what time we got to be where and you know absolutely what day and all that kind so of stuff so since you brought up touring sierra let me let me ask you this like let's start with like the simple stuff like what keeps you going after all this time because You've done it for a while, you've had a successful, like you could retire tomorrow and you have where to hang your hat forever. What keeps you going like on such a passionate level still? I just really love it. I always have. I mean, I knew from the time I started playing mandolin when I was about eight, you yeah. know, so I got a, a start real young and it does kind of feel like, okay, now I'm 31 now. It's like, I feel like, yeah, I've been doing it a long time now. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I kind of look back at how many years I've been seriously, you know, working to become, you know, better and better as a musician and, sure. and an artist. But, um, I just, I knew even back then, this is what I wanted to do with my life. And it's been of like all the kind of gray areas we have in our lives, you know, about things or, sure. or things that, are, you know, don't know which way to kind of direction you want to go or whatever. Music, though, it's, you know, we all kind of go through periods of that where it's yeah. like, what's next? But there's never been any question about doing the thing itself. Right. You know, maybe the journey that my music takes me, you know, musically speaking, if I'm going to, you know, kind of go in this musical direction for a while or... Sure this other direction for a while and kind of those sort of things of course you know are the things that can keep you up at night but as far as like <laughs> knowing that that i wanted to do this there's never been any question it's been like yeah. one of the the big sort of certainties in my life that i always felt like that was what i knew i really wanted out of my life so i think just having that love from such an early age it's mm. it's never left me even when it's tough sometimes you know yeah is it the connection because I've seen you, I mean, I've seen you in several stages. Like last time, I just remember in Sacred Rose, you, yeah. had, you know, you were with Margot and stuff. And just seeing the way you throw energy into the audience and they throw it back at you. It's like such a beautiful thing. Is that like ultimately, like if you boil it down, what it is? It's, it's a huge part of it. I mean, I think that we all as musicians would play even if we never had anyone listen, you know, because we love it. And, and it's kind of one of those things they say, if you can quit, then you should, you know. Yeah. And I think for... For most of us, and oftentimes people in the audience, you know, especially like I grew up in the bluegrass world. So the bluegrass world, you know, is a fairly small community and like half the people in the audience also play yeah. and, and, you know, love, <laughs> love the music. They're not necessarily right. just listeners. They sure. participate in the thing itself, you know, under shade trees and in jam sessions around a circle, you know, in the parking lot or whatever. Yeah. And so I would always play even if no one was listening. But I do think that I'm really motivated by you know, when when you know you have an audience to play for, there's a different kind of motivation and energy toward being able to perform for sure. people. Sure. And and I do love that so much, you know. I love that, Sierra. And by the way, and, and I meant to tell you this, I don't know why I haven't, but everyone who I talk to who knows you and everything, a smile lights up their face when like your Aww. name comes up. Well, that's nice. And, uh, no, it's a beautiful <gasps> thing, and it's true. Like, like I was with like Adam Chaffins like a couple days ago. We were at a hockey game, and everyone, Margo, everyone is just like, "Oh my God, we love Sierra." It doesn't Aww. matter where you go or what you're doing. And I guess the question is, you know, how do you maintain yourself in such a beautiful emotional state? Because you know, we all have bad days. We all <laughs> sure. get depressed and sad and angry, sure. and there's days that we're judgmental, all that stuff. But we all come back to like an emotional home. Yeah, totally. And I feel like your emotional home, like where you come home is one of joy, is one of gratitude, and that's what people kind of like always reflect when they hear about you. What, I, how, how do you do that? Like? Man, that's really nice to hear. Um, I feel like I've been lucky, you know, since we, we all, you know, there's certain things we get to choose and then certain things we don't get to choose. You know, we don't get to choose the life that we come into with our families and our, you know, it's like a lot of us, you know, get, get started in different ways and some more fortunate than others. And for me, it's like when I was growing up, 
my parents, we, we, they didn't have a lot of money, but what we did have is a lot of love Beautiful. and a lot of, you know, they, they supported me. My parents never once made me doubt that music could be the thing that I did, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like the older I get, the more I can kind of reflect back on just how lucky I am to have had that. Because I have a lot of friends who are still kind of searching for what they want to do yeah. with their careers, and that's fine. You know, it's like there's there's time to figure it out, and seasons have changed and things yeah. like that. But I was really lucky that the thing I became so passionate about, I had parents that really kept me grounded, and and even when like opportunities were coming that were cool things, they always kind of reminded me that you know. Music is one thing, but it can't define you and mm. that, you know, being a good person matters way more than any of that Beautiful. stuff. And, you know, it's like, so I think I was really yeah. lucky just to have that kind of support and those kind of things instilled in me early on that I think it's it's helped me to like maintain Absolutely. sort of a, a, a steadiness yeah. throughout my career. And, you know, I mean, uh, it's not like I haven't had my fair share of hard times, too, but, Absolutely. you know, I think I'm just you know naturally a, a fairly happy person so yeah. even when when times are are tough i think i can tend to sort of you know find some kind of positivity in the things that are happening even that's when huge. i don't always feel it you know what i mean that's huge and and then i think just being surrounded by good people you know i think that's what really helps maintain those things is yeah. like you know making sure that the people you surround yourself with are helping you be the best person you can be Absolutely. you know and that um you know, I think that makes a huge difference. If I was, you know, traveling around people that were just always a drag to be around, I yeah. mean, that, that affects, you that know, affects especially you. Sure. me. Like, I'm, I'm definitely the type of person that I, <laughs> like, you know, if somebody's having a hard time, I, like, kind of take that on. I feel right. that. I want people around me to, f to feel good and, right. and be happy. And so I, you know, tend to, to care a lot if I feel like, oh, that person over there, they seem like they're not, you know, right. maybe even to a fault sometimes where I like worry about it or whatever. Sure, but sure. like, you know, I think just surrounding yourself with good people who, you know, you can love and appreciate and they can love and appreciate you back is so important to, to keep that, you know, kind of steady um, no. happiness, you know, so at large, yeah. you know. So many like nuggets, they're interesting. Um, today is the last day with you, um, I mean official, as a band in 2022. Yes, it's wild. It's After like a crazy, like last It's been a crazy, months. yeah. I mean, you haven't stopped like in two months. <laughs> yeah, like, it feels I'm like all year actually. Yeah, all year. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, year. Yeah, you took like a little break, like a two week break and yeah, exactly. Does it, and this is interesting, like for my audience to know, because the, the, the brotherhood, they don't see the brotherhood that happens with your bandmates, yeah, and the tour manager, mm -hmm. and the way you guys like live together, basically. Totally. Does it? Are there any emotions like being the last? Day? Like, like, do you people? I should say, you people. Do you guys get, you know, like, like the last year of high school, like when there's like two months before graduation? Yeah. Oh yeah. Are there any like those emotions? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I know that we're gonna play again, you know, soon. Yeah. Like at some point soon. It's not gonna feel like that. Yeah, you're that playing long, the Opry but, like soon, but yeah. Well, well, yeah. So this is our last kind of official thing, and then we go home to Nashville, and we're doing like a surprise pop-up show at this kind of local right. spot in town that a lot right. of the guys love and frequent called D's. And so we're gonna do a, a pop-up set there, and then we're doing like a few songs on the Opry Tuesday, and that'll really feel kind of like okay, now we're. We're kind of, and I'm, you know, doing some other stuff the rest of the year right. that I'll be kind of busy with. So it'll be a minute before we can get back to some of the band stuff. But I feel that way oftentimes with, with, um, you know, anybody that I'm traveling with. I was thinking about that because I've done a lot of touring with Bela Fleck this year, mm -hmm. and I've done a good bit of touring with Corey Wong. Yeah. And anytime you're out like this, this tour that we're wrapping up right now, we've had a lot of, sort of festival hopping and quick trips, you know, where we're doing maybe a week here and there, but like we just are finishing about 20 shows yeah. in a short period of time, you know, right. like three and a half weeks, something like that. And, and when you're really just, I mean, show after show, night after night traveling, there's just something kind of beautiful about being able to get in a flow and in a groove with yeah. people you're traveling with. Yeah. And so you do, man, you become like family when you're trapped on a bus with somebody yeah. for three weeks, it's you like, know, it's like, yeah. you better like them. You better, <laughs> you like, better them. like the right. people you're traveling with. How do you know and they're you just like the best. Like, um, like when you're picking bandmates and you know they can play, it's Nashville. Yeah, you know, I'm, it, it's an interesting thing. I usually um, will try to, yeah, 
go do I think this person is is a good musician obviously, <laughs> obviously. they need to be able to cut the gig yeah. but like if I get kind of an inkling that they just wouldn't be yeah. a good person to be test. around you it's to just like Costco on Saturday morning or something it's just <laughs> like yeah yeah let's go have coffee <laughs> no, no but I usually at least with some of the people like a lot of these guys I've traveled with I kind of knew a little bit already right. um, and if not you know I just stalk them on Instagram and and on YouTube and try to get an idea of what their playing's like and what their vibes mm. like and you know yeah. usually you know you know somebody that knows them and you know you get kind of references from people and stuff like that too so you know I think I've been really lucky that I've never really been on the road with somebody that's just turned out to be like usually my instincts are pretty pretty accurate, pretty accurate. you know like yeah. it, you can it's easy to get enough of a I sense with somebody yeah, 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 if you're yeah, yeah you know, kind yeah. of having some short encounters with them where you're like, okay, you know. Yeah. And we all have our quirks. I mean, come on, I, you right. know, it's like there's always things that, you know, it's like it becomes a family. We're going to drive each other crazy in small ways, right. you know. But, um, but Make yeah. Sure the values are aligned. The, big, the, the values big are aligned and that, you know, I've been so, so lucky to have really good people around, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. And yeah. usually I find what's really funny, some of the most talented people are oftentimes the ones that are the most well balanced as humans mm -hmm. too i mean because a lot of times i don't know um i don't know if there's just like a certain awareness and i know that's not always the case but you know it's like sometimes you know when people have extreme egos or whatever there's usually some inner like you know self-consciousness that's sort of driving all that or yeah. like you know um that's and, an interesting point whereas a lot of times i think you know a lot of the people that are some of the most talented people have like worked really hard and probably been very realistic with themselves about the things they need to work on sure. rather than just assuming they're the best at everything. Right. You know what I mean? And right. so um, those are the kind of people I want to be around. People that, that, that have like a bit of a self-awareness for, you know, both yeah. musically and personally and all that stuff. You know, this is interesting. I wasn't planning to ask you this, but it's really interesting what you brought forward because, I mean, you're one of the best in the world. You're the best in the world. You're just oh, the IBM, you well, know, my you. words. I, I appreciate you know. that. Like, you've kept yourself there for a while. Is it like an athlete, Sierra? In the sense that, like, you know, you, you read about Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. They were always, like, they never said, okay, I made it. They were always at 5 a.m. in the gym. Oh, yeah. Is, is it like that with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny, like, you know, you said something earlier about, well, you know, I could sort of already quit and have a lot to hang my hat on or something yeah. like that. And I'm like, I don't feel that way at all. Right, right. I don't feel that way at all. I mean, like... I know if I stop and I sort of look back at like a lot of the really amazing opportunities I've had and things that I've got to do, it's like I can look back and go, you know what, truly, I know that I've been so blessed. If nothing ever else came my way, like I've been so fortunate more than a lot of people to get to live out the thing I love and do a lot of things. But like, man, that's never the thing I'm like reflecting on very much other than, you know, moments of pause and gratitude. But I'm always kind of looking at well, and what's why you you. what's next and, what you know, how can I become better at all yeah. this and how can I? Because yeah. that's also part of the joy. Like that's yeah. part of the high for right. me of being a musician is, you know, trying to work on new stuff, trying to get better, trying to constantly figure out, you know, how to challenge myself yeah. in that way. And um, and also getting to, you know work through that with other friends and musicians yeah. it's like that's part of what makes it fun and if we're just kind of out here going through the motions it's sort of like what fun is that you know to that. me that's not where the the fun comes from it's you like know, complacency Japan, isn't you know in japan that's the mentality it's called ikigai and it's like if you are gonna i don't know if you ever saw a documentary about hero makes sushi or whatever but like no i need if, to check if that you're out. gonna make sushi be the best sushi guy in the world. Yeah, totally. If you're gonna be a carpenter, cool. Yeah. But like, master whatever your you're craft, gonna do, master your be craft. Be the best in the world. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, yeah, I, that that's part of the fun and something like music. There's just you. There's no end yeah. to all you can learn and experience, and we get to do things like we're always, you know, here we are at this festival. Neither of us have ever been here because it's right. first year festival. It's the first year. Yeah, I hope <laughs> but, it yeah, not that I know of. <laughs> they but, were not so hard, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like it, the there's always a change of scenery. There's always someone new, like yeah. uh, us connecting or, right. or whatever, some a, a new friend to make or a new yeah. um, sort of thing to be inspired by. And so True. that's kind of a beautiful thing. That's you know, I this is the only life I've ever known as far as being musician I've yeah. never really done anything else so you know but I know a lot of people who have to work their nine to five jobs and they don't get that experience of having and some people love that some people that's exactly like this this life started. of being yeah. on the road and all the traveling and the grind I know lots of people who are just like that is mm -hmm. not for me that's yeah. not what I want 
So you kind of got to find the thing you love, whatever that is, whether it's doing a nine to five thing, whether it's doing something where it's a, a different scene every day. For me, I think I thrive off of the fact that, that it's fresh constantly. There's always something new yeah. to sort of experience, whether that. it's the traveling, whether it's the people you meet or the music you make, there's always something new. And I kind of, I don't know, I feel fueled by that. What a beautiful thing. All right, well, let me leave you with this, because you're being so good with your time. Hey, no, my pleasure. Play, like an incredible <laughs> set in the, main, the big stage there. Um, you know, we're in Monterey. We're, in, we're in the site of the Monterey Pop Festival of 1967, which actually was like the first festival in the world. Did you know that? I didn't know Everyone that. Everyone thinks it's like a Woodstock, but this one came two months before Woodstock. Whoa, this was, see, I didn't even know that. You play at so many festivals, and you're coming to the site of festival number one. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. What and, an honor. You know, Janis Joplin did, uh, you know, came there, The Who, uh, you know, uh, Otis Redding. Is Jimi Hendrix. Jimi uh, Hendrix burned his like guitar. Like guitar. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an iconic venue. Yeah. Um, I know you grew up with bluegrass and all that, but, you know, share some thoughts about maybe some of these rock icons, what they meant to you, like, or, you know, how they've influenced you. Man, you know, it's like the, the older I get, like, the more, so I did grow up very, rooted in bluegrass but my my parents loved all kinds of music too you know and so i was i was always hearing other outside things though bluegrass once we kind of got into that it was like pretty obsessed and, and rooted <laughs> in that and now the older i get it's just like anything the thing you kind of dig your heels in and have roots in the most you have periods of kind of stepping away and yeah. digging into other things so the more i've got to come to festivals like this that have that kind of history and also like different kinds of artists on the bill that like i mean i don't know if there's another bluegrass ish band here this weekend per se you know it's a, like a pretty diverse it's pretty diverse pretty diverse lineup and so that's cool to Maybe me turtles? yeah travel yeah. by turtles mm -hmm. so so it's kind of cool to go okay there's like a few of us that yeah. kind of like come from that world but then a lot of like some bands I haven't heard of on the bill right, and some other right. bands that you know I've started to get to be at more festivals with and stuff like that so yeah I love that just being able to come to to a place like this and um, you know kind of take a step outside of the bluegrass scene a little right. bit and yeah like I mean gosh Jimi Hendrix who who doesn't you know I mean, I mean, yeah. think that that's awesome <laughs> to get to come place and where we were playing uh, this place in Bakersfield last night, uh -huh. and there was a in the green room like a giant poster of Jimmy, you know. Just being Jimmy. Yeah, and <laughs> I was just like thinking about the fact that we were coming here today, and just like, man, how cool is that? Cool you is know, that? I mean, Janis Joplin, like, what the heck, you know, it's like it. to to belt and throw down the way, <laughs> you know, and something like that. Hole. It's such a different <laughs> thing, you know, than than uh, you know, growing up in the bluegrass world and and you know, sort of being in that scene where it's like, I don't know, it's it's kind of all about the music and acoustic and like but but these people were like performers you know yeah. and so like that energy I don't know I'm inspired by that you yeah. know getting to, mean, to think about somebody like that being too. on a stage yeah. you know in a beautiful site like this it's it. pretty cool to get to be somewhere like that so I'm excited to play here Sierra Hall now you're gonna leave your mark here yeah we'll You've see it all for today <laughs> always a pleasure to see you yeah you too thanks, thanks so much I have no more songs well I'm not feeling alone Cause I've never been too high Well, welcome to this good time life Howdy. How are you? Good. Man, you just finished rocking the main stage here to start Rebels and Renegades Festival. Yeah, it was, uh, we were, I was a little concerned when we showed up. A lot of country, more rootsy acts were here. Uh, not saying we're not very rootsy, but it's kind of a uh, little bit more electric, a little bit more, uh, I guess, toward the rock side or the soul side, you know. And, but they still, I think all of this kind of Americana stuff kind of, the audience kind of absorbs all of it. It's kind of just, it's just kind of like American music, even if it's kind of like an outlaw country festival kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we had fun. Um, definitely weird to be on a big stage. Hey man, that's where but, you belong. I mean, yeah. you owned it. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Just a lot of, a lot of room to walk around and stuff like that. You owned it, Larry. So, dude, you've had so much success uh, this past year. First of all, congratulations. <laughs> Thank I you. I like tell you, man. Um, I mean, critics are buzzing about you. Everyone's buzzing about you, man. Let me let me ask you a little bit about that. Like, okay, 
you know, like you're becoming like a like a more of a known name now. Yeah. Is there like an added layer of I don't want to say pressure, but you know, before you had the freedom that nobody knew who you were and you could like take risks and do all kinds of different shit. Now you have a standard to live up to. Any pressure with that? Any any music? Oh, uh, not yet. I think. Um I could be wrong, but I think the kind of band and people we are and who we're working with, I don't think there'll ever be that pressure. I could see that with, I think I could see that with like an act like uh, Tyler Childers, you know, he's huge and um, even like uh, Zach Bryan, you know, yeah. they've, they've reached a level that's crazy big and uh, I don't think, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying we won't be there, but I'm just saying, you know, I don't think we're aiming for that. Sure. Uh, we always found a lot of comfort in bands like Lucero or... Um, Friend of our band, Ben Nichols. Yeah, yeah. yeah ben yes. Nichols, yeah. Uh, and uh, Blackberry Smoke's another great example. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, they're just good people. Not saying, you know, the other people aren't. They're just friends. They have a fan base that comes out every time. Yeah. Um, we'll never be arena band, I don't you know, I don't, we're not, not aiming yet. for that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just... Amen. So I, I feel like I'm always constantly setting myself up to not be under pressure. Cool. Because I just... Uh, it's, really? a, it's a scary place to be. I just yeah. don't... I'm not really for it. I'm creatively stifling, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can get crazy, and yeah. that can hurt you too. But, uh, yeah, just all the, the pressure that would come along with that. And not the, the, the those guys I named ask for it. It's yeah. just kind of happened and you know where we're where we're at there's no pressure yet there's n there's not a lot of that it's just cool to be involved I kind of feel like we have a a place i guess a little bit you know yeah man i'm curious you went to martin high school right is that uh yeah martin high school for a while, martin high school for a while. and then i had a uh my girlfriend was going to a different school so i just went there it's kind of like you know the kind of yeah kind of the kid thing to do and I finished up in Otsego, where I was born and raised. I just went to Martin. A lot of family was there, and sure. it was again. It was kind of like it was a smaller school with less pressure, and that was a one one hallway, you know. And I knew everybody. Everybody knew each other, and I just I I kind of run away from um, big things uh, like I, interesting. I don't like uh, I don't I think. I dehumanize a lot of stuff where it just feels like you're not worthy almost, kind of like that stuff. And I just don't like that. I like being in a small, small setting where everybody's comfortable and no pressure. I love that. Man. And that even went back to going to school, you know. So how how was you know you're such a great and unique unique person and unique creative, and you always knew that this was like your purpose. But like how were like your last years of high school? And and the reason I ask, Myron, is you know everyone has their high school responsibilities yeah but at the same time your creative soul was dragging you in one direction how was those like the last couple of years for you uh i'd say f probably sophomore year of high school i was uh i was pretty lost um i was a terrible student not that i was a bad kid i just didn't do well in school i have a very hard time concentrating on something i'm not into completely I got kind of like obsessive well thing. you knew that this was going to be your passion Yes, I loved music, but I didn't like math. You exactly. know what I mean, I didn't science, and I wasn't doing yeah. well. Exactly. And uh, uh, college was never really a true creative. You are, man. Yeah, kinda, <laughs> it, but it really does screw you sometimes, and it tended to do that through those years uh, until I found a trade um, that I learned. I, I learned how to weld in high school, and um, I was gonna, I was gonna see what that was all about. And I did, uh, and it just lingered kind of just obsession over yeah. um, all sorts of music. A lot of Western swing, even soul music, a lot of American roots music. I just was I obsessed. Really yeah. I really hear the soul in your voice. I yeah, I lo that's my favorite singers are the soul singers. Writing, I get yes, that, man. but the melodies of yeah. Western swing are great. And yeah. th that's the great thing about this whole Americana yeah. thing. You know, I find myself into that. But yeah, as far as school went, I just, I was not a good student. I. I did well in history sometimes. If we found a subject or something, I've, I've got a very undiagnosed just kind of issue where I just get stuck on something. I'll just obsess over it for a while, I you know? It, That's cool, man. By the way, you're new to Nashville. I mean, you, you moved to Nashville. Um, yes. And, you know, 
your latest single and all the stuff you're recording in these historic spaces like RCA Studio A. For yeah. <laughs> Man, I gotta ask you a little bit about that. Like, is that's gotta be a little bit like spine tingling, right? Walking yeah. Into this historic room for Dolly and Elvis and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh. That was a process. Because there um, is like a vibe, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, not only that, I was. Uh, the whole band, we're all buddies from Michigan, and we were all huge fans of Dave Cobb. Uh, I remember, I say this a lot, but I remember the day I was listening to all this music, like Southeastern and um, the Sturgill Simpson stuff, because it kind of had a classic kind of thing where it was just like, it was all about a song. Yeah. And I turned those CDs around and I saw Dave Cobb. I'm like, who is this guy? This what They <laughs> this all have good. this in common. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. And then Stapleton hit huge, and uh, again you know you turn around traveler and there's that name dave cobb so we started when we started to get around to play music we're like well if we're ever going to record this is a long shot but if we're going to do it let's do it right and let's just try to get dave cobb to do it and thankfully he kind of found us and it happened organically um but when we got in there we were kind of intimidated by dave cobb because we're all fans and then to add on to that Elvis, you know, and uh, Waylon Jennings and Dolly Parton all played in there. So th at the end of the recording session, we were in there for about a month. I had a hole through my thumb from picking at it so much. <laughs> I was just uh, like uh, a nervous. Tick yeah, kind of just thing. an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way we did it was very natural. We cut the album live, which helped a lot, a lot of instrumentation. And then it was just kind of a laid back. Let's go down and do some vocals, just like the old all the people we love did it. Um, so that helped, and Dave was a level-headed, non-rock star type character, which really helped. Uh, and it was easy to just kind of remind yourself that all those guys were human too, sure. even though you know it's hard to wrap your head around some of that. Yeah. Um, even going to the bathroom in RCA was kind of hard because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Cropper. Yeah. He was a songwriter and a renowned uh, guitarist. Uh, he's in the soul stuff from Memphis. He wrote "Sitting on the Dock of a Bay" with Otis Redding. You know, wow. he had a he had a studio in RCA, and when he went to the bathroom, you could hear just soul guitar sounds coming from down the hall. And we ran into Jamie Johnson, uh, who holds a big spot in our hearts, just from uh, bringing that classic sound back to us when we were I, I was probably ten when that Lonesome song came out. And, yeah. That album just hit like a ton of bricks, you know, because we all worship George Jones and Waylon Jennings, and here's this guy. He's kind of the first guy that kind of cracked the door open for everybody, you know. Uh, and he ran into us. Uh, he didn't know who the hell we were, but we were in the, the lobby. I was on the phone, and elevator dings, and here he comes stepping out. And my cousin Ricky, he's playing drums, he goes, uh, he looks him dead in the eyes and just kind of goes, whoa, like just like that, like he saw a ghost. and. I'd say it was different to be in a spot like that. We were not, we were maybe ready, maybe ready with with the material, but we were not ready for the whole, that whole thing. And, um, and it's the first time. First yeah, many, it's, the first, it's first the first many, time. Man. Now you kind of got to get your bearings yeah. a little bit. Even uh, being at a festival like this, like yeah. you just did Sierra yeah. um, Hole, and we're giant fans of Sierra Hole. She's a great player and when we started we loved bluegrass we yeah. still love bluegrass sure. just you know we ain't good enough but <laughs> and, uh, um, to play with her and or not with her but a lot you know yeah, the same, same same yeah. kind of bill and the uh, the white buffalo and sure that's just kind of we're just getting started it feels Absolutely, like and it's man. very fun but I love it yeah. to get you at this point in your career, man, and you're being so good with your, with your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Let me leave you with this. You mentioned Otis Redding. Otis Redding, he made his North American debut right here, man, in Monterey Pop oh, Festival yeah, yeah, in 1967. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was, Monterey was the first ever festival ever. I don't know if you knew that. Really? Because people talk about Woodstock. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. This happened a few months before Woodstock. This okay. This was festival one. Yeah. Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix putting his guitar on fire. Yep. Otis Redding. Jefferson Airplane, The Who, you name it, man. Yep. So I got to ask you, man, about playing, you know, it, it is musically sacred ground. Tell yeah. Tell a little bit about that, man. How about playing here? Uh, well, you know, we're dorks, and on the way here we talked a lot about sharks. And uh, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't really put the whole Monterey Pop Festival thing in action just because of the setting that this kind of, um, this kind of, 
festival is. Yeah. It's kind of more of a, it's Americana, Americana right. stuff. Right. But yeah, when you put it that way, um, that's pretty heavy to um, kind of take in. Thankfully, we're just we're playing this Americana thing. If we were playing like a Monterey Pop Festival thing, yeah, we'd probably be losing it a little bit because <laughs> you can't really follow uh, can't really follow Otis Redding. I wouldn't put that on anybody, you know? <laughs> especially that performance there. That was uh, legendary. I I I think that's the version um, I've got downloaded of. Uh, um, I've been loving you too long, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's still the version I'll listen to. You know, it was just uh, yeah, he, he did it right. It's too bad he passed way too absolutely. young. And well, Myron, it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, Thanks for having me. Happy to be along at the beginning of your journey of what is going to be a very, we know, successful journey for you. Man. Absolutely. Thank All you. Right,